Welcome to News Channel 8. I'm Gene Garcia. And here are some of the top stories we have for you tonight. Police have released the name of the man found dead in Estate Humboldt. Newly elected Governor Mapp speaks on the Hovenza issue. And we got your Thanksgiving weekend happenings. These stories and more up next on News Channel 8. <laughs> I Trade Earth brings you News Channel 8, a Puerto Rico and Virgin Islands based approach to economic development and the global marketplace. One small business at a time. Call 866 396 8278 for more information or a look at us on as seen on channel 8.com for I Trade Earth. In our top story, major crime detectives are investigating the death of Trevor Pamphill, age 24. He was found with gunshot wounds to his body in the vicinity of Estate Humbug on November 24th, around 10.15 p.m. Police had been dispatched to the area to investigate shots fired. According to the initial investigation report, officers observed the unresponsive body of the victim on the side of the roadway. The victim was wearing a white t-shirt, blue jeans, and red and white sneakers. He had an empty gun holster clip to his waist. Police also observed a white Chevy Malibu with the engine running and several spent shell castings in the ground. Police said that the vehicle was registered to the victim. All items of evidentiary found at the scene were collected for forensic and other testing. In other news, newly elected Governor Kenneth Mapp spoke out after a letter from the manager of Hovenza's St. Croix fuel rack on Monday repeated that the company's warning it is preparing to shut down the facility. What is written in the documents mm -hmm. and what is the practical application of executing documents when you sign contracts, mm -hmm. what does it mean to the lives of the people of this territory? Absolutely. And the question is, does the operating agreement as it is constructed without access and knowledge of the purchase agreement, even able to answer the question for the set aside of the 50% of the payments in lieu of taxes and the sale price, mm -hmm. what can the people of the Virgin Islands expect for in, in that transaction? Sure. Is it three times seven million dollars if it's three years of abatements, which is supposed to be you recover the set aside of the the, the set aside of the pilot payment mm -hmm. or the higher of the value of the sale capped at fifty million. Right. And then you have the forty million of the forty three million for the payment of the contamination, sure. uh, which would be due the people of the Virgin Islands. And if you read the media and the listen to the conversations even of ABR, right. there's this supposed interchange that the forty million dollar fee for contamination is also the bonus payment for the set aside of the, mm -hmm. the, the payment in lieu of taxes. Right. So even from the perspective of ABR, there isn't even a clear and concise understanding that we're talking about two separate payments. Sure. And in this conversation of this proposed operating agreement, have Hovensa said to the people of the Virgin Islands, upon the sale, mm -hmm. you can expect a payment of X dollars for pursuant to the uh, ratification of the fourth amended agreement, mm -hmm. which set aside the $7 million payment for property tax. Sure. In addition to ABR saying, we will take the responsibility on to pay mm -hmm. or raise the $40 million that's due and owing for the contamination. So just on its face, the very basic premises of obligations due and owing to the people of the Virgin Islands, there is confusion between the seller mm -hmm. and the buyer, mm -hmm. not even the legislature or the people of the Virgin Islands. And so my words should be viewed as words of caution. Right. The legislature and the members of the legislature certainly will make their decision. Mm. But what we are, are describing to you and to the people of the territory, that this is a process that needs to slow down. Yeah. And there needs to be a clear and concise understanding. One, mm. does ABR have the capacity in a reasonable expectation sure. to be able to perform under the operating agreement. Mm. And if there is a reasonable expectation that they can perform, then that says something. Right. If there is not a reasonable 
expectation that they can perform, why would we supplant ABR right. in the obligations of Amarada Hess, mm -hmm. Hovic, Hovensa, and Pedevesa? Meanwhile, Wang Louis Hospital CEO Dr. Kendall Griffith spoke about the recent systems improvement agreement the hospital signed with the Center for Medicare and Medicaid Services. This will allow the hospital to continue to participate in Medicare programs. CMS has made it very clear when, when we, we went to Baltimore, they do not want any more plans. Mm -hmm. They want action. So you before were churning yes. a lot of paperwork. Exactly. And they weren't impressed. They were not impressed. And okay. they said they don't want to see any more plans. Mm. They want to see action. And so they said, don't give us a lot of details in y your systems improvement agreement. Mm. Just get it done. Pretty much just right. get it done. Sure. So there, there are broad strokes of things in the organization that just need to get done. Mm. Now, ag again, the criticisms will come, but here's, here's the thing. This is where we have to be, and th this is where we've been, and that's why we're necessary to, to sequester ourselves. You see the end game, and you know that you're going to get there, and you know that you have put everything in place to make it happen. And it only takes a matter of time to be able to, f to get to that point. So you're actually marching toward the goal. But everybody now is criticizing you and jumping on you and beating you. And the <laughs> only thing you can do is say, patient, patient, patient. Mm -hmm. Just wait, wait. Let them beat, let them scream. Mm -hmm. We stay focused. We get to the end game. So with the November 20th deadline looming, yes, right. the press came out. And I, I was accused of not being transparent and, and so forth and so on. Thing, sure. You know, your credibility comes into play. Your character comes into play. Your integrity comes into play. Patience, patience. Stay with us. We have more news right after this break. This is News Channel 8. This is News Channel 8. And welcome back to News Channel 8. Now it's time for your Caribbean report. Now here is Dahlia George. Thank you, Junior. I am Dahlia George and I will be presenting your Caribbean report. The Board of Governors of the Sir Arthur Lewis Community College in St. Lucia has granted approval for the college's Division of Teacher Education and Educational Administration to offer a postgraduate diploma in education. The postgraduate diploma will be offered under the auspices of the Eastern Caribbean Joint Board of Teacher Education and through a franchise arrangement with the School of Education, University of the West Indies Cave Hill Campus. This is a postgraduate program. Therefore, only persons who have at least a bachelor's level degree would qualify to do the program. Initially, the year-long program will be offered only to persons who are already teaching in St. Lucia and do not have formal training in functions or works of a teacher. Persons in the program will study, among other things, how to teach in specific subject areas, undergo a teaching practice component, and conduct action research in an education-related area. The areas of specialization to be offered are the teaching of English, the teaching of mathematics, the teaching of science, the teaching of social studies, the teaching of modern languages, the teaching of business, and arts and craft at the secondary level. The first group of students will commence the program in August 2015 through an in-service arrangement. To that end, the college and the Ministry of Education will work in tandem to ensure that the college continues to offer citizens quality education at affordable rates. A Roman Catholic priest in Dominica has been defrocked by Rome almost two years after allegations of sexual misconduct surfaced against him. Monsignor Reginald Lafleur, who has been Catholic priest for over 30 years, was issued a decree by Bishop of Roseau, Gabriel Malzair. The 60-year-old priest was put on administrative leave almost two years ago after a woman alleged that he touched her inappropriately on her bottom and breast and made sweet eyes at her 19 years ago when she was a 12-year-old parishioner. The woman made the accusations against Lafleur in a series of letters to Bishop Gabriel Malzer, the head of Dominica's diocese. 
Malzir had sent the accuser to Trinidad and Tobago for counseling as the local church panel investigated her allegations. In a statement, Bishop Malzir said, After a preliminary investigation, the case was forwarded to the Congregation for the Doctrine of the Faith, which has exclusive competence in these matters. The Congregation, having reviewed the case, authorized the bishop to proceed with an administrative penal process. He continued, the accused cleric was duly informed of this process and invited to take part by leading a defense either personally or through his advocate. Because the accused cleric had not answered to the invitation to participate in the process and in an attempt to preserve the right of defense, another canonist from outside the diocese was invited to lead a defense on behalf of the accused. Bishop Malzair in an interview said the matter was difficult for him and has caused him and the church much pain. Buenas noches, Virgin Islands. I am Dahlia George, and this has been your weekly Caribbean Report. Join me back here next Wednesday to encounter more news and views from the Caribbean. I pray that everyone has a safe Thanksgiving. Back to you, Junior. The Home Shopping Expo will be wrapping up this weekend in St. Thomas. Let's check out how things are going over there at the Tutu Park Mall. Well, things are going pretty good over here in St. Thomas in the Expo International Home. Let me tell you, we have a lot of products going on and people are just coming over to see everything. And we have a friend from St. Croix, how are you? What's your name? I mean, from St. Thomas, what's from your St. name? St. Thomas, my name is Lindsay. Ms. Lindsay, somebody t uh, t you told me that somebody sent you from St. Croix. Yeah, my, my man over in St. Croix actually told me to come check it out. He said there's really cool stuff going down. He actually pointed towards the massage table with all the little massage instruments and he's like yeah they sell super glue too I'm like okay so massage instruments with super glue sounds awesome so I decided to come check it out and it's really cool stuff do you think this is a good idea to bring expos here to, to St. Thomas and St. Croix that you can actually see other things and whatever um, you need absolutely we can use all we can get on these islands it, yeah. bring something new to the table it's always good yeah, well, thank you very much. We appreciate you coming and buying stuff. And, and, well, thank you for bringing in your daughter because this is a family, a whole family, mom and dad and family, people coming over. Well, thank you very much, You're Julia. Very thank you. As we're saying, we're, they're selling pretty good. And actually, you know, time is flying. People are buying whatever they need just because Christmas is coming, uh, Thanksgiving is coming, and they have great products. Over here we have some jewelry and the people you can actually see. And, well, let me see if, excuse me, miss, could I ask you a question? Miss, could I ask you a question with the microphone, please? Could you just let, let me know what you think about this kind of uh, events going on here in St. Thomas? If it's important people come over and bring some thing, like the fairs or whatever they need to do something different? Yeah, it is, and the prices are great, and I like it. I've been here like five times, and I've gotten a lot of stuff here. You already came five times? I did. I bought like four necklaces, and look now I'm buying a bracelet, and I bought a ring yesterday. Okay, and what I are you gonna get? Wrist trainer. I bought something over there. I bought a lot of stuff here. Who did you buy things for? Have you bought anything Myself, for? Myself, my cousin, my younger brother, and my mom. Okay. Yeah. Well, that's that's wonderful. I appreciate you very much, and thank you, sweetie. Eh? Gracias. No, no so there we go. Everybody's just shopping and doing some stuff. And come over here. Let me tell everybody that they have all kind of products for the kitchen, for the health, for the home, beauty, everything they have to do, fixing stuff. I know men love to fix things. Well, they can actually come and fix you. And look at these ladies right now. They have they bought a lot of stuff. You can see right now. And let me let me see if I can interrupt them. Ladies, can I interrupt you? Can I ask you a question? No. Yes, come on, tell me, tell me what, oh, no, what do you think about this event, ma'am? Do you think it's a good idea to bring this kind of events to St. Thomas? Or no? <laughs> they're too shy, don't worry, don't worry, they're, they're too shy. The thing is, is that people can actually come and see what they have, all the services, all the things. Let me hear. Anyway, so many things, people just come over. This is the last day, the products are almost done. Uh, they have qu great quality and great prices. So, well, come and enjoy over here in St. Thomas, the Tutu Park Mall. There's a few more days and that's it. So, more things, just come over. Don't touch the remote, we have more news straight ahead. This newscast has been sponsored by Mario's Virgin Crystal. Let us save you the hassle of lugging those jugs around. Purified bottled water conveniently delivered to your home or office. Also available in your favorite grocery store. Call 773-2810. This is News Channel 8.
This is News Channel 8. And finally, here is Mr. Bogle with your entertainment report. Thank you very much, Junior. Good evening to everyone. Welcome to this weekend's edition of your entertainment report. And we're going to start off with tonight, Wednesday night, KDM and Sika Promotion presents you Tug of War in the Christian set area. It's all about band versus artist versus, versus DJ. You're going to have it in Legacy Lounge. You're going to have the Fusion Band, Kylo and the Styley Band. And also at lunch area, you're going to have DJ Trooper, Super Tracks International, DJ Chubby, and Syndicate the Ultimate. And in the middle, you're going to have, of course, the Dancehall Diva, I'm talking about Spice, and Daddy Babs of Dog Art International. So definitely, you want to go to downtown Christian State. And then we're going to tell you about this Saturday, there's a big fundraising dance at Crusaders, featuring a DJ that used to run the Virgin Islands a very long time ago. We're talking about DJ Hot Watts. He's coming back. You're going to have DJ Jewels. You're going to have um, DJ Young Brothers and a special DJ from Miami. That's at Crusaders this Saturday. You can't afford to miss this one. It's going to be a night to remember. Also, this Saturday, from about what, 4 o'clock in the afternoon, you can go and check out the cool session, the coolie band. That's right, that's the coolie band. Don't be at the drive in. You gotta come out and enjoy the session. Um, also, you have DJ Will and DJ Sniper. That's this Saturday at the drive in. Also, this Saturday, you have been here about it for a very long time. It's all about the Woman Empowerment Project. CTEC and CTEC Cosmetology Program presents the seventh annual Sonata International Magazine premiere here and ex here and fashion extravaganza that's this saturday at the educational complex it will be hosted by myself you also have mother nile cindy models in the eyes you're gonna have jg management models the scec dancers and also you're gonna have dj macho productions also you're gonna have hair designs by different um, groups so you definitely want to come and check it out general admission is twenty dollars and with the after party, it's $30. The after party is going to be at 2 plus 2 with the heart attack band. So please go and support this event. And also now we're going to move on and we're going to tell you about some other events that's coming to St. Croix. Of course, next week, Saturday, you know this dance was postponed and it goes on. That's the third annual Dominica Independence Dance sponsored by Oak and Will. On the card, you're going to have DJ Will, DJ Young Brothers. You're going to have DJ Tap. And also, you're going to have Oka and the Grill. You come out and hear some Zoo Karans Booyah all night long. It's just $10 to get you in. So you definitely want to check that one out. And also, we want to remind you that this Sunday and every Sunday, you can go on down to Spratnik Beach Bar and Grill. You're going to have a live band and also a DJ in the house. So check it out. Also, we want to tell you, on December 19th, he's coming to St. Croix. He's been asking and waiting room for a very long time. And he's coming with his whole cast and his new play. We are talking about Oliver Samuel, and he's bringing the play Dolly House. So please mark it in your calendar and be there. And also, I want to tell you, last but not least, Saturday, December 27th, it's all about New York and the Virgin Islands link up. It's Ayinde's Capricorn Afia birthday bash. Goes down at the line. You're gonna have Steely Bashman and Young Chow out of New York, DJ Chubby, and Super Truck Sounds. Also, you're gonna have DJ Avalanche. Tickets are $25. You can pick them up at, of course, Urban Treads. It's all about you have to be early if you wanna get in. And this is the official after party for the We Got Jokes VI Comedy Tour. So, definitely, I wanna thank you for joining me here on the Entertainment Report. Remember, it's a long weekend. Whatever you do, do it peacefully. If you drink, just don't drive. Back to you, Junior. Wow, and that is one thing I definitely want to go to, and that's the Senators here, International Extravaganza. Talk about getting your wig split. Definitely going to be there. Educational Complex, 730. Don't go anywhere. We have your weather coming up next. Your weather coming up next. Your weather. And here's a look at your five day weather report. Tonight, isolated showers, mostly clear, with the low around 71. East northeast wind, 20 to 22 miles per hour. Chance of precipitation is 20%. Thanksgiving Day, isolated showers, 
sunny with a high near 79. East-northeast wind 11 to 16 miles per hour. Chance of precipitation is 10%. On Thursday night, isolated showers. Partly cloudy with a low around 71. East wind 8 to 11 miles per hour. Chance of precipitation is 20%. And on Friday, isolated showers. Mostly sunny with a high near 82. East wind around 8 miles per hour. Chance of precipitation is 20%. And on Friday night, scattered showers. Partly cloudy with a low around 71. East wind around 11 miles per hour. Chance of precipitation is 40%. New precipitation amounts between a tenth and quarter of an inch possible. This is Cheryl Francis with your Channel 8 News Weather. Thank you very much for tuning in. That's all we have for local news. And I want to say a happy Thanksgiving from myself and the staff here at WSVI-TV News Channel 8. Be safe. We'll see you on Monday. We'll be off for two days. So enjoy the football games. Go 49ers. Yes, I said it. Go 49ers. And good night, Virgin Islands. I Trade Earth brings you News Channel 8, a Puerto Rico and Virgin Islands-based approach to economic development and the global marketplace. One small business at a time. Call 866-396-8278 for more information or a look at us on, as seen on channel8.com. For iTrade Earth.